right, guys, I'm working my way through some stuff I've had on the desk for a while. Just opened this up. This is from the Admiral, and I'm not sure he wants me to say, but erroneous designs. He builds counter picking stuff. Anyway, he sent me, it uh, looks like the box was handled a little roughly, but we got a homemade pick. He made this. He says he's probably picked a thousand locks with that. First pick he ever made. And he said, send it to this thing. Woo! Man, that's got some roughness to it and a couple miles on that thing. So it looks a lot better for, than my first pick, I can tell you that. Made out of windshield wiper insert. And then he gave me a couple of blanks to make uh, my own picks out of. Um, the really interesting part of this is right here. Inside of these little containers, he sent a lot of homemade pins. All kinds of stuff to make pins out of. He says he really likes to experiment with this kind of stuff, little gears, and hey, BBs, man, I, I've shot plenty of people with those when I was a kid. Little screws and all kinds of weird looking stuff inside of there. So, very neat. I'll be using those and some of the challenge locks that I send out to you guys. Uh, some other stuff also made pins out of this. It looks like plastic material. And lastly, and the part that I really like, these are springs that come out of Bic lighters. He says cut them to length, super strong, get a lot of resistance. And you guys have punished me with a few of those in the past. Um, do have a key. I don't know what this goes to. We have two locks in here. Oh, wait a minute. What do we got here? Oh, we got two more picks. And... Nope, wrong one. Must be for the other guy. All right, he has a Titan, which is basically a quick set. And he also has another one here. Now, I'll tell you, he says this one's been around the block. Let me see if this is even the key for it. That's not even the key for it. All right, this one's been around the block. He says, uh, best of luck, Bill. Hoping, I hope you can be the first to crack the Brinks lock. But if not, you can gut it either way. It's been through enough pickers undefeated. I feel it's time it gets opened instead of beaten for once. So somebody has taken out their frustrations on this thing, apparently, and sent it back to him. Let me see if I can clamp this dude up. It is sealed, and I mean that's a permanent seal job. Man, oh man, I don't even know if I'll be able to get that apart. That looks like it's filled up with epoxy. Man, this filled up with epoxy or something. Well, anyway, I got to pick it before I got to worry about that. Let me go and clamp it up and let's see if we can get it open. I'd like to be the first. All right, guys, there's actually another letter in here that he asked me to read off uh, off camera because it's got his personal info. But this is the one that goes with the challenge locks when you send it on. Um, it's contained in this package or two. Yeah, we knew that. Uh, the rules are simple. If you can't pick it, you cannot gut it. The Titan is the only one of the two that can be picked. Please do not beat on the Brinks lock out of frustration. It's been beaten on by a few due to it's being almost impossible to pick. Due to this, the key has been pushed, pulled, and twisted to the point of it is on the verge of fracturing. So please treat the key with care. I'm gonna, I have the key off the side. I'll try it again. It didn't fit the first time. Um, these challenge locks don't contain threading, serrated pins, T-pins, drunken spools, or security pins. I wish you the best of luck. Admiral, and please send this letter along. All right, this law, this key apparently works for both. And I, I couldn't get it to go in the first time, but this time it does. There we go. All right, does work. So let's try this thing. There's what your key looks like, guys. Never seen anything quite like that. All right, I am going to pick from the bottom of the keyway with some of my new uh, uh, rare elements picks. These are 13,000. I say new, but I've had them for several months because I can pick from the bottom. I'm not forced to pick from that ledge. Let's see what we got there. All right, we need the top of the keyway. There's a lot of flop in it. I'm going to pick it, I guess, clockwise. All right, all the way in. Find a binder, and let's see how much frustration I can tolerate. I just clicked on three, and I got a little click. Uh, tell you what, let me unclock that. Let me get the marker. Let me tighten them up a little bit. And we will put the mark on it. 
All right, let's try that. Before we get too far down the road. Okay, I think we're looking for three for the first one, right? And this time I get nothing. There it is. Okay, three. A little bit of fault set going. Let me zoom in. And I want to document all the beating on this. You know, I'm hopefully I don't have to beat on it. I'm getting a little feedback from two. Very light tension on this thing. Okay, I got a click and I lost my fault set. Okay, I got my fault set back. Let's pin two. I'm on one. A little bit of feedback. Okay, I'm on five. Counter rotation. Still got a fault set. Not much, but I got it. There's three, counter rotation, very slight. Lost the fault set. Oh, I got it back. I just touched pin four. Pin one, counter rotation. That was pin three, kind of forced him up there. Very deep fault set at this point. Last pin, counter rotation. Okay, I lost the fault set. Here it is, three again, back with a deep fault set. That's two, counter rotation. Lost the fault set. I'm about to drop the tension. The tension on the, uh, is very light. All right, there we go. All right, let's figure out, and this is probably going to be the hardest part, how to get this thing open. All right, time for the clear one. I am not going to remove this from the frame. I believe we can get a sharp object and hopefully without gouging my hand I can dig this stuff out of here then push the plunger and I think we can unscrew this. Yeah, that's a plan. Let's try it. Uh, I need a sharp object. Let's try a flat tip screwdriver. come out of there. There we go. That wasn't as easy, as hard as I thought. All right, there's no detent, so I should just screw right off. All right. Let's try that. I do have a key, but right, we don't think we need it. Let's just try this, see what springs out at us. This looks very rough. Oh. A lot of grinding on there with a piece of sandstone that he had out in Utah, probably. We got some undercuts. No, no, we don't. Those are just markings from the sanding. I don't know why this was sanded flat. The, there's a groove pretty much on every single pin. There's a little slot there, but I don't know what that would serve. I don't know what purpose that's for. It is not undercut, though. Nor are any of them threaded. Of course, he said that. There's a little undercut right there, but not much. We got a couple of T-pins in there. Let me quit flapping my lips and let's just pull them out of there. Let me zoom a little bit. Nah. 
trying to keep everything in frame. Standard. Standard. We got a T-pin. We got a homemade. And then this one is a T-pin. This is probably the ugliest core I have ever seen. <laughs> All right, let's see what kind of magic is up there. I thought it would take longer based on the letter. It took me longer to read the letter, I think. All right, what do we got? Very strong spring, and it is a spool. Number two. Very weak spring, and it is a very small spool, like you'd find in an abus. All right, number three. Another spool. Um, let's slide it around and go from the other side to keep the light on everything. Number five, very strong spring and another one of those tiny little spools. And number four, I can't even get him. There's something else in there too. All right, let's get some real fine tweezers and start pulling stuff out. Come out of there. All right, it was a, a key pin, but with, ooh, but with the pointed end pointing down, which actually would have given me a better chance, I think, of, of getting into that. And then we have some weirdness here. There's a pin in the side of the lock here, just barely sticking above the shear line. I don't know what he goes to as there are no grooves inside of the he lines up with number five for sure i'm gonna turn it upside down so if i can get him to fall out there he no that's the spring that's the wrong spring that goes there come out of there now there he is he's another looks like another key pin but he was sticking out of the side i'm gonna put him up there All right, let's keep going. Okay, something else just popped out of here. There was a groove in the bottom, and this plate thing just fell out of the keyway. Okay, on the right side and the left side, I don't know if you can see this through the camera. There, This is the row of pins. There's a pin right here on the left, and there were two pins on the right. Let me turn it around. You can probably see it better from the other side. Little guy right here. And that little guy right there. Let me pull these guys out. I'm going to have to turn it upside down and dump them, I think, because I can't get them with a the tweezer. They're just not popping out. They're almost perfectly flush with the shear line. Okay, there's one of them. And he was with number three, and he was actually with number five. And I think there's one more in there lined up with number three. He just doesn't want to come out. There he goes. Lined up with number three. All right, I would suspect that the this is supposed to be a trap lock that as you rotated this, if you didn't have the proper key inside of there, when either number two, three, or four rolled past, that trap pin would then pop into the cylinder. Either I was very, very lucky, but I think probably more likely is that these had been in here for so long that the, the uh, springs had become compressed and so they were right at the shear line. I don't think the springs had enough energy to push those pins into the core when I picked it and rotated it. Otherwise, I would have been trapped and then totally hosed. But I got it. I think, though, it was probably a matter of luck and age. And maybe some of the previous beatings convinced this Brinks would be a good idea to give up a free open today. Because that's pretty much what I got. Anyway, guys, there you go. All these springs are pretty much all the same, I think. Yeah. Anyway, guys, appreciate it. Uh, erroneous designs, great design, stronger springs. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe.
Day legal. Let's look at these real close while we're at it. There's what your pins look like. And the one thing that we didn't get a chance to look at before I was anxious to sign off is that small plate. There was a little plate that fell out. And the plate would have been located. Now see, that's something we should have looked at. I have no idea what those are for. I'm not going to say that they line up with anything here. I have no clue. This must be, have some application in the other lock. Maybe this was the prototype that didn't quite work out, but these grooves definitely don't line up with any slots, but interesting to look at. Anyway, there you go, guys. Uh, this lined up here. And I think you can see in the bottom of that lock, there's a slot that this guy fell into, just like that. What he does, I can't begin to say. Because there's nothing down inside of that groove that would cause it to spring up. No clue. Anyway, appreciate your time, guys.